have Dior and Chanel. And for the Dior, I've actually liked quite a bit for a long time now, the Forever and Ever Dior. This is a Eau de Toilette, but this one just has a way of not, of just being a bit stronger. It actually feels like a perfume and I've gotten a lot of compliments when I've worn this. It's just quite difficult to find. This is not available in Canada or the US. Most of the time I do find this in Judy Freeze. And if you're traveling internationally from Vancouver Airport, I usually do find this. And I also find this quite a bit in Asia. But Judy Freeze, definitely, I've seen this almost in all Judy Freeze, but not in freestanding Dior counters in department stores. I don't know why, but I think when I asked before, and even in the packaging, um, it had Japanese characters on, on them, so I think this was an exclusive to Japan, and then for some reason, the Judy Free started carrying them, but in North America, it's not available in jar counters. Um, now for um, two Chanel fragrances and obviously you see which one I extremely favored last season um, this was actually quite a surprise because I think um, this is Allure by Chanel is one of the fragrances that has been around for quite a while yet it doesn't have the kind of um, the kind of It doesn't have that kind of following as the number five or that kind of reputation as the number five and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this for a long time and have just glazed over it because it does look quite old outdated and it just gives you that feeling that it's it has that scent of your grandmother's perfume and the reason why I actually stumbled into this or actually even considered it was um, I had a co-worker before who used to wear this a lot and I was always smitten by the fragrance, not only because of its actual scent, but because it just seemed to have that longevity, which really, I think is the only fragrance by far, except, well, maybe green tea of, um, it seems to have that kind of longevity that really has the same intensity, even if you've worn it for about eight hours already. And I was just astan uh, astounded by that. And I actually really found the scent very sexy and very alluring, I should say. And um, when I started wearing this, a lot of guys would ask me what I was wearing and a lot of girls as well. And I realized what kind of attention it was getting. And um, yeah, I like it so much. I actually finished the entire bottle. Haven't thrown it because there's probably still about three or four wears left in this. But of all the Chanel fragrances I've actually ventured into, I used to, I also like Coco Mademoiselle, but this one is really musky and really strong. Sometimes it can get quite heady, but this one just has a very mysterious, really alluring um, enigma to it, I think. And I I realize it when somebody else is wearing it and I realize the reaction that I get from people when I'm wearing it so definitely um, this was a surprise and this is my favorite Chanel scent and then um, well there's Coco Mademoiselle which obviously I haven't used in quite a while only because um, when I purchased the Allure I just kind of favor this so much more um, this one has some more I think has a deeper, uh, more aged kind of appeal to it. Um, whereas this one I find is a bit more flirty and fun, like younger womanish. This one is a bit more of a sophisticated kind of older aged woman. Not exactly like your grandmother's perfume, but it's just much more musky and really, really strong. Um, some people probably would find it not to their liking or quite offensive. Um, and then I have two scents here, which are really not very common. This is a Lan Van scent, and this is Rumer, Rumer, I guess that's how you say it, De Lan Van. And 
Um, similar to the Coco Mademoiselle, this is in the legs, a very heavy, very musky. You really just need one spritz and it's going to last you for a while. Um, it's not florally or ro it's not really the tuberose florally kind, but um, I can't really describe in a proper way how to put this in words because it's really unique. Um, it's not quite like a lot of the scents that I've showed you guys by far. Um, the only thing that I can really say about this is that it's extremely musky and it's extremely of a deeper, more sophisticated scent. Very strong. You just need one and you probably never have to reapply again. And last but not the least is this fragrance which I did favor for a whole fall season and I think um, this was my second bottle. This is Hanai Mori. I don't know if that's going to show. Um, this is um, very musky and florally. This is not, this is the blue. This is actually the Eau de Toilette. And it's not the perfume version. If you guys see the packaging in Sephora, it's the one with the blue butterfly. And this is a Japanese designer, but this fragrance is made in France. It's a bit pricey. Um... I like it because it's unique. It's a floral based scent. I can't remember exactly what the base notes are, but it's just very different from all the Gucci, Dior, and Chanel scents that you actually come across. It has a very unique floral blend to it, which I've never smelled from any other fragrance. And um, I think for these kinds, like I wouldn't wear this right now. I haven't actually worn this. In quite a while these fragrances are really good for extremely cold weather and really it just is a very musky warm scent they're quite strong if you're in warm weather or you're um you're it's during the summer months it's extremely strong and it can be offensive I would never dare wear these scents during those times because they're warmer and richer but when I did favor them during the winter months, extreme winter cold seasons, they actually translated very well and their fragrances you don't need to reapply again. So basically that is my, those are the top, my top fragrance picks. Um, I usually do try other fragrances every now and then, but I never keep them long enough or actually repurchase them because I actually go back to the ones that I've just shown you guys. and. I also do keep a lot of my um, travel size or sample fragrances from different brands. Um, so that's a great way that I get to try them without actually repurchasing all of them. And these are just the kind of fragrances that I actually end up putting in my purse or carrying around with me. So I have a few. This is Jador by Dior. And then I have the YSL, the L Perfume. I have a travel size Chanel number no. five, and then one by Nina Ricci. Um, this is Miss Dior Cherie, the perfume. So I usually I have another whole box of them, and that's another reason why I rarely really purchase full sized bottles now, which is because they're not very practical for me, and I do get quite a bit of samples which I just really kind of rotate, but I usually gravitate towards the Dior and Chanel fragrances and the French brands. So that's my share for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great evening.